So, there's probably a few of y'all out there asking yourself right about now, how in the hell did this guy that is not exactly a household name in the Fox Body YouTube influencer world, how did he get a 1993 Cobra R down here at his place? Well, to get to the point real quick, because I know you guys really want to see the car and not listen to me talk, this car belongs to a good friend of mine who was also one of my very first customers when I started Southeast Fox Body. He called me up a couple weeks ago and he said, hey Mike, I need to bring my 93R down there to you and I got a couple things I want you to take care of that you're specializing in so I can get it ready for a show I've got coming up in March. Are you interested? And of course, duh, who the hell wouldn't want to work on a 93 Cobra or have the opportunity to put their hands on one and add that to the resume. You know, but on top of the fact that he's really a good friend and that's the main reason I was interested in doing it because like I said, he's, he's a repeat customer and he's a super cool dude. He's a Fox collector. Uh, he enjoys these cars. You know, this is, this is his thing. He's got quite a few of them. And this was an awesome opportunity. So, of course, heck yeah, man, bring it down. So, uh, he brought it down to me. We went over a few things that needed, you know, just my typical underhood, undercarriage work, a little bit on the interior. Had some window tint on the back hatch needed to be taken off, you know. Incorrect plug wires. He wanted it put back to factory, just like stock, you know, with the gray Motocraft wires and the correct wire looms under the hood. New decals. Just odds and ends stuff, you know, to get it back up to where it needs to be. You know, the car's uh, number 39 out of 107. It's got 41,000 miles on it. Like I said, he, he drives his cars, he enjoys them. So uh, that's kind of an approach everybody needs to take with these things. You know, if he's out here driving a 93 Cobra R around and enjoying himself, then there's no reason for me to not be out here driving this 91 Coupe or you guys to be driving your cars around. So that's, an, like I said, that's an approach we all need to start taking in life because these things ain't doing us no good sitting here in the garage. As easy as it is to sit them in here and look at them and enjoy them and keep them clean, that's not what they're there for. So anyway, I got it done, everything's wrapped up, and I wanna go ahead and do a little walk around video of this thing for you guys to see, because not many of y'all ever get to see one of these things on video or even in person. So for y'all out there, I hope this is a good opportunity for you guys to kind of soak up a little stuff. I'm not a historian on these things. I know honestly very little about them. Um, I can tell you this, it is a Ford purpose-built factory race car. Plain and simple, 100%, that is it. That's what it was intended purpose was, to race on, on the uh, track, not the drag strip, but the uh, road course. And that's what it did, and it did it pretty well. So we're gonna go ahead and get to the video, walk around, take a look at everything, and if you guys have any questions, you can always hit me up in the comments. And I appreciate your time. We're gonna get right on it. All right, let's go ahead and get it started. First thing we're gonna look at right out here is the engine bay, obviously. If you notice, there's a few things that look a little differently than a normal Fox does. First things first, you notice this car does not have factory air conditioning. And it also does not have a factory smog pump like most cars at this time. Reason for that, it is, like I said, purpose-built race car. Ford eliminated that stuff. And I think the only uh, of these 107 cars that were built, the only, there was maybe four of them that were in California that all had smog pump setups on them. The rest of them did not have smog. Uh, they also have this oversized strut tower brace that goes along the whole width of the engine bay, obviously, for more support for these strut towers, because we all know how they like to flex and move around, when, especially when you're putting them in the hard curves. Also has an external coolant reservoir to help aid the cooling run around the, the road track here. They tend to get a little hot. So Ford put that on there to help tap into the cooling system, give it a little, little more boost to help keep it cooler. It's also got a oil cooler on it, so it uses a shorter Ford uh, Motorcraft filter instead of the normal FL1A like you normally put on this 5.0 engine. Two row radiator, like I said, to help in the cooling. Down here in the front, in the bumper, it's, you can't see it, but it's got a power steering cooler built into it. And if you also notice something's missing here, they have no fog lights. And Ford did that, number one, for weight reduction, but number two, to help to keep the brakes cool when you go around the track, because we all know how bad these brakes on these cars really suck. Which these have been upgraded, obviously, because it's a race car. Um, then right here, to also aid in the weight reduction and the cooling of the brakes, you'll notice that there is no inner splash shields in these front fenders like a standard Fox would have. So speaking of the brakes, these are 13-inch rotors, dual piston, aluminum fin, Kelsey Hayes uh, brake calipers. And you have 17-inch by 8 wheel. And a 255 40 17 inch tire they put on these directional obviously help that thing get around the track a little bit better and obviously stop better bigger front brakes is always a plus 
Um, standard on the outside, you know, just like a regular Cobra would be. Cobra badging on the fenders, all your ground effects. Everything's pretty much the same. I mean, just your standard stuff. Now we're gonna go to the inside. Now this is what a lot of people don't realize about these cars. Being a factory built race car, Ford made them as lightweight as they could possibly get them. So that being the case, they got rid of your standard Cobra seats and they put these lightweight LX style seats in there. I call them SSP seats. Those of y'all who know what an SSP is, we're not going into that right now, but if you do, you'll understand what I'm talking about. These are just like an SSP would have, cloth front, vinyl back. Like I said, lightweight stuff. Ford also built these cars without power windows, power door locks, or power mirrors. Notice there's where your place for your normal window switches would be. And you have the good old manual style window crank. Also, these cars do not have any radio, any speakers, nothing. No wiring, not even an antenna. You can see where their radio's got a block off plate. And they're right here where you normally have air conditioning selector on your AC controls. It does have nothing but vent. Another main feature of these cars that Ford did to save that weight, no back seat. Also, no rear hatch cover that would fold out. Matter of fact, these cars are so lightweight, they didn't even put any kind of insulation underneath them, underneath the carpet, no sound deadener, no nothing. Everything is just a piece of cardboard and this carpet draped across it. So according to Ford, what their numbers are, they said that this saved approximately 240 pounds on the weight of this car. Now, as we all know, Ford has a tendency to fudge their numbers a little bit, so who knows if that's actually facts or not. But hey, it sounds good on paper. So, around here to the back, you got your standard Cobra rear disc brake, single piston caliper, 10 inch rotor, obviously 17 by eight wheel. Cobra wing, Cobra badging on the hatch, Cobra rear bumper and exhaust, Cobra tail lights. We're gonna go ahead and open the hatch up here. Give you a little better view of what it looks like. Like I said, no, no rear sunscreen that folds out. That's gone. Nothing but a piece of carpet. They even went as far. They didn't even put the, the piece of cardboard on top with a, what do you call that? A press particle board that they use as a spare tire cover. Ford didn't even put that on there. Nothing. They're doing everything they can to save the weight on this car. And I mean, they were successful. This car, you know, for what it was being, like I said, a race car, it got around the track, made some pretty good numbers. Unfortunately though, on contrary to popular belief, those of you that know this already, you know, you'll obviously, you know that they're not very powerful. Most folks out there think because it's a race car that it's gonna be some big high horsepower thing. This car only has 235 horsepower, 280 foot pounds of torque. Not a lot, obviously, considering that all the stuff they did to save the weight, they really didn't do too much to boost the horsepower other than your just typical stuff, removing some basic accessories. So really, that's it. For those of y'all never seen one, this is a 93 Cobra R, number 39. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you can, if you don't mind, because that helps everybody out. Been had a blast walking around here. Glad I got to work on this thing, got to add that to the resume. So, nothing else. You guys have a great evening. Catch you later.